I'm going to spend some time talking about volumes because it's such a big issue on the AP exam, um, on the Calc 1 exam. It's most likely going to be the subject of one of the six open responses. On the Calc 2 exam, not as likely, but there's still a decent chance that it will be one of the six, and if not, it will be heavily covered in the multiple choice. So it's something you need to be able to, um, to remember how to do and to understand so that um, it's easier to to recall how you do these problems. So we're going to focus on this same area. It's contained between the x-axis, the red graph, which is the square root of x minus 1, and the um, light blue, which is negative 1 half x plus 2. So I've got the area shaded. We're going to keep using that same area. And so the first thing we're going to do is rotate it around the x-axis. So you have options. A lot of volumes you could do um, a disk slash washer, which I really consider to be the same method or you could do a shell method, and sometimes one is better, uh, sometimes one is faster, sometimes you don't have that option and you have to choose one, but in this case we're going to have options, but each one will have its advantages. So let's do, let's do disk method first. When you're doing disk method and it's around the x-axis, really there's only one thing you need to know, and what's the radius of this disk? And if we're going to do this in x-world, so I call x-world any dx integral, because everything has to be in terms of x. If you do this, the disadvantage of the washer method on this volume is that to, from 1 to 2, we have one definition of how tall this yellow rectangle is. And after you get to 2, it takes over, the line takes over determining how tall this rectangle is. So if we want to do the disk method, we're going to have to break it into two parts. We're going to integrate from 1 to 2, pi on the outside, of the radius squared and the radius is the square root of x minus 1, quantity squared, dx. So this will give me, when, when I think um, disk or washer method, I'm thinking pi times the integral of radius squared. And for washers, pi times the integral of big R squared minus little r squared. That's just um, basically a disk method with some empty space uh, in the middle. But all, the only really thing I need I need to come up with is the radius, and that's just a function because I'm spinning it around the x-axis. If I move the axis around which I'm spinning, I'll have to add or subtract or do something to that radius. But this, this setup right here is going to give me the volume from 1 to 2, and then I have to add to this pi times the integral from 2 to 4 of the other function squared dx to get the other part. Because if I move left to right, I have to change the way that I define the rectangles. Because the graph that I run into when I, when I go up from the axis changes at the point 2, 1. So this is how we would have to do this if we're going to use disk method. So what's the other option? Well, you could do shell method. The advantage of shell is that it's one integral. This Every rectangle I draw from left to right is defined as the line minus the square root and that happens all the way from bottom to top. So the advantage is that it's one, um, one integral. The disadvantage is I have to change everything over to y's. So if I just want to change these two functions to, their, to solve them for x and get them into y world, on the, on the line, I'm going to subtract 2 and then multiply by negative 2. So I'm going to have y minus 2 when I move this 2 over. And I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So let's call that negative 2y plus 4 equals x. And the um, square root function, I'm going to square and get y squared and then add 1. So x equals y squared plus 1. So you have to make that adjustment if you're going to do shell method. So for shell method, what I remember is 2 pi on the outside. And all I need to put on the inside is the radius of the shell and the height of the shell. I'm in y world, so the, the, the limits of integration have changed from y equals 0 to y equals 1. I don't have to write those y equals, but it just uh, puts an emphasis that I'm moving from bottom to top. Right? This bottom starts at 0 and ends at 1 if we move bottom to top. The radius of this shell in this green rectangle is going to produce a shell that looks something like this if I spin it around the x-axis. The radius of this shell is just y. All right, the radius is always going to be x or y or, or x or y plus some number. But in this case, it's just y. It's right here. It's, my picture's getting cluttered, but right there, that distance is y. And every shell that I make is going to have a radius of y. 
the height of that shell, which is actually horizontal because this shell's laying over on its side, is however long that rectangle is. And that rectangle is however far apart the two functions are. My, if I'm up at the top, they're gonna to be close together. And the further I go down, the further they get apart. So that distance is just the right function minus the left. That's kind of the horizontal version of top minus bottom, which we've done a lot when we found areas and things like that. So it's gonna be right minus left. And I've already solved them. So the right function is the line, and that is negative two y plus four. And the left function is the square root, which I have solved and made y squared plus one. So this is the radius of each shell and this is the height of each shell. And since I'm in Y world, I'm gonna have a dy. So those two, and I would encourage you to type both of these into your calculator or do them by hand if you just wanna do something for a half an hour. <clears throat> but those two are gonna give us the exact same volume because I'm, I'm not creating a different volume. Shells and, shells and discs don't create different volumes. They're just different ways to chop up the volume you create when you revolve that shape around the x-axis, so the answer should be the same. All right, so let's do a little um, variety here. Let's do around y equals negative one. So instead, I'm gonna spin it around this axis. So all that's gonna do is adjust some of the values um, that, that we need to use. And I'm just gonna do this one with shells. So remember, in the last slide, we took this rectangle and we rotated it around the x-axis to create a shell. Now I'm just rotating it around an axis that's further away than the x-axis. Uh, my limits of integration don't change. Um, I'm gonna make a note here that I'm just gonna do this one with shells. I'm still gonna have a two pi and a zero to one because I'm still starting here at y equals zero and ending right here at y equals one. I'm not concerned about the x values left to right. I'm concerned about the y values bottom to top. So the radius of the shell Here's the radius of this shell, okay, because it's going to come out and down back into the, into the screen below the line, y equals negative 1, but its radius is right here. That radius is the same radius it was on the last shell method, just one unit longer. So that's just going to be y plus 1. Remember, radius in shell method has nothing to do with the function. It's y plus a number, or it could be something like x minus 2 or something like 5 minus y. It's going to be x or y maybe with, with another number if our axis has been shifted away from the x or the y axis. And good news here because our, um, the height of this shell is no different than it was on the last problem. So I'm still going to have right minus left and let's see that was um, when I solved for um, x on these two functions, I had negative 2y plus 4 and y squared plus 1. All right, so think about these, these shells. By, by rotating them around, rotating the rectangle around an axis that was further away, I didn't change the height of each shell. This, this green rectangle is still the same length as it was before, and they still go from small up here to large up here. They are just bigger radius shells. All right? They spin and make a wider arc, a, a bigger circle, but they do not change um, in the sense of how long they are or the height. Um, and just when I say height, just realize I'm talking about something that's going side to side, which is awkward for a, a height, but um, when you're talking about cylinders and things like this, the, this is the height dimension, even though it's laying over on its side. Okay, so what if we want to rotate around the y-axis? So the big difference here is I've changed the direction of the axis of rotation. I'm going to rotate it around a vertical axis. So what that means now is that a horizontal rectangle which is in Y land, all right, everything's in terms of Y, will create a washer because it's laying on its side. And a vertical rectangle is going to create a shell. All right, if, if the rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation, which is now a vertical axis, you create a shell. And if it's perpendicular, you create a washer. So I'm going to do this one with washers because we haven't done washers yet. 
and because that lets me do it with one integral instead of two. If I were going to do shells here, I would have to have one shell for every green rectangle and a different shell method for every yellow rectangle. So let's do washers. All right, so when, wash, when, when I decide to do washer method, first of all, that has to be in terms of y because my rectangle is laying over on its side and its thickness is dy. So pi um, 0 to 1, these are not negotiable. This is not really a decision I have to make because I know I have to be in dy. Um, the, the things I do need to decide on are what's the big radius and what's the little radius. And then I'm just going to make it dy. So the big radius in this problem is how far it is from the axis of revolution to the far edge of the area. So that's right here. I'm rotating it around the y-axis, not the line y equals 1 or the line y equals negative 1. So I'm not going to have to add or subtract anything to the function. I just need to write the function. So the big radius is the function that is um, the line. And again, it's in y world, so that was, um, I keep forgetting what that was when I solved it. I moved the 2 over and got y minus 2, and then I multiplied by negative 2, 2y two plus 4. I could, should probably be able to remember that. Um, this function in terms of x is 2y is plus 4. The horizontal distance from, a, from a, a, the y-axis to the graph has two possible names, either x or what x is equal to, and in this case, it's equal to 2y minus 4 because we're doing the washer method. So let's fill in the specifics, 0 to 1. Big R, 2y plus 4, quantity squared. Little r, and here's my little r. That's, that's from the um, axis over to the function that's closer to it. I'm going to run into this red line before I run into the, to the graph of the straight line. So that one was... Um, that one was y squared plus 1, and I'm going to individually square that, and dy. And this is an integral that if we had to, we could square all of that stuff out and integrate and sub in. It wouldn't be too bad, but we'd have to deal with all those fractions and integrals. Um, so let's just focus on the setup right now. All right, so a lot of times on the last question or somewhere on the AP test, they'll, they'll throw in this little twist. Um, we're, we're talking about area now, not volume. And x equals k divides the area into two equal areas, find k. So there's a vertical line somewhere, x equals k, that's going to cut this area into two equal areas. So I've done a little bit of background. Um, first of all, this, this triangle over here has an area of 1. All right, go back to geometry, one-half base times height. So here's one. So what I've found is the integral over here, I integrated the square root of x minus 1 from 1 to 2. Um, the integral of that is x minus 1 to the 3 halves over 3 halves, or times 2 thirds. So here I am. When I plug in 2, I get 1 to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, which is 2 thirds. When I plug in 1, I get 0. So long story short, this area right here is 2 thirds, and this area over here is 1. All right, so with that in mind, I need x equals k to divide the full area into two equal parts. Um, so this... In, in this particular setup, if you've got a 1 and a 2 thirds, how much does the 1 need to donate so that it matches up with the 2 thirds? And it might be tempting to say, I need to cut off 1 third worth of area. But if you cut off 1 third, then the 1 is down to 2 thirds, and the 2 thirds has become 1. So we don't want to give away too much. I want to give away this much area right in here, and it needs to be 1 sixth. All right, I want to split the difference and give 1 sixth to the two-thirds, so it becomes five-sixths, and I'll take away one-sixth from the one, so it becomes five-sixths. So basically what we're down to is this. I need to know how far do I integrate the straight line before I get an area of one-sixth. Okay, so this is the equation. I know that the area I want to get equals one-sixth. What I don't know is where do I stop integrating. So I'm going to integrate from two to k, I don't know where k is yet. 
but I want to integrate the straight line dx and end up with one sixth. And this can be presented in a variety of ways, but what's going to happen is you're going to end up with an equation where your area is known and your limit of integration is not known. And sometimes the question will say set up but do not evaluate this integral. Sometimes we'll have to actually find it. Let's find this one um, just to show you that it's not something you can't handle. Um, all that's changing is where my unknown is. All right. When I sub in my limits of integration, I'm going to put a k in place. So let's integrate. Negative 1 half becomes negative 1 half x squared over 2 or negative 1 fourth x squared. 2 becomes 2x. Limits of integration are k and 2. And the answer needs to be 1 sixth. So sub in k, what do you get? You get negative 1 fourth k squared plus 2k. And when I sub in 2, I get, let's see, uh, negative 1 fourth times 2 squared. That's negative 1 plus 4 equals 1 sixth. So I have an equation that I would need to solve. It's going to be a quadratic equation. It didn't turn out as pretty as I was hoping it would turn out. But if you solve this equation, you would probably, uh, the easiest way is probably going to be the quadratic formula. I'm not sure if it'll factor. But um, that's the equation that needs to get solved. Whatever the situation, whether it's a calculator or not calculator, you want to solve to where k is your answer because k is the unknown, that unknown top limit of integration. So I want you to have a little experience with this because it's something that they ask from time to time. Very common thing to see on your AP exam.